Hello there. You all have definitely heard of environmental pollution and one of the types of environmental pollution is air pollution. Air pollution refers to the degradation of quality of air in a particular region due to the introduction of harmful materials which we call as the pollutants. Now there are different causes for air pollution like the domestic combustion when we burn firewood or when we are burning fuel whatever gases are getting released are toxic to the environment and they contain pollutants and thus there is air pollution this is mainly true in the rural areas we also have industries contributing heavily to the air pollution and we have vehicular pollution which is also very very rampant globally so in this video what we'll be looking at are the different ways of controlling air pollution of course there are other causes as well that is the waste in landfills releases a lot of methane which is a greenhouse gas or the fumes from the paints which are applied indoor are also in a way uh, adding pollutants to the air and causing air pollution we also have crop waste burning which is a big problem in certain areas because that again releases a lot of toxic materials into the air mining construction activities all of these are different sources of air pollution however we will be looking at how to control air pollution from mainly these three sources that is due to the domestic combustion what all can be done to avoid this or at least reduce it what can we do to reduce the air pollution from industries and what can be done to reduce the air pollution from vehicles these are the three headings under which we'll be dealing with in this video before we look at how to control air pollution let us look at what are the effects that it has on the health of individuals and biodiversity and what effects it has on the environment now on the health we know that air pollution causes a lot of respiratory diseases there's coughing continuous wheezing asthmatic attacks so it causes it affects our respiratory system it also causes lung cancer especially this is seen with women who use the chulha where there is a lot of smoke that they are inhaling directly and that smoke contains carcinogens or cancer causing agents so it is known to cause lung cancer as well not only that long term use can lead to cataract and even eye irritation from the smoke that is coming in in the domestic setup this is the health effects that is that that it has apart from that we have a lot of effects on the environment as well so our biodiversity gets affected there is global warming that is occurring due to the greenhouse gases so greenhouse gases are normally also present in our environment they are helping to keep our environment our atmosphere warm but the problem here is there is too much of the greenhouse gas so the warmth the heat in the environment is also very very high that's what we call as global warming and then global warming has a host of other effects which leads to climate change there's smog problem which happens in cities or areas where there's a lot, lot of smoke that's coming up smog is a mixture of smoke and fog this again can lead to a lot of health problems a lot of detrimental effects in people in the environment on the buildings or uh, in you know with respect to the animals the plants keep dying so smog also is a big problem that can happen to the environment ozone depletion this mainly happens due to certain components called as the chlorofluorocarbons or their derivatives and these start depleting the ozone layer which is there in stratosphere stratosphere layer of our atmosphere contains ozone which protects us from the ultraviolet radiation so what happens is these components start breaking down the ozone and then there is nothing to protect us from the harmful uv rays of the sun acid rain is yet another problem that mainly happens when we have a lot of sulfur oxides and nitrogen oxides in the atmosphere so these sulfur oxides and nitrogen oxides react with water and then they come down in the form of rain which is highly acidic now what happens in the presence of acid all the tissues get burnt so the animals are harmed the plants you know are harmed because all their leaves fall off they are completely burnt out it's very harmful to the skin of human beings so these are some of the effects that the uh, air pollution has on the health of human beings as well as on the environment now let's look at what are the measures to combat air pollution or to reduce air pollution at the domestic level how do we come out with alternatives for domestic combustion so the first thing is we need to look for alternative fuel sources now what is being used in the rural setup is mainly wood so fuel wood is being used of course it has been reduced a lot of work has happened in this in this regard and they have reduced the usage of wood however in many areas they are still using firewood to for all their domestic purposes to uh, burn anything they are using firewood now the problem is we need to replace this firewood or fuel wood with a clean fuel clean fuel is something that is 
you know uh, it is not going to harm the environment that's why it's called as a clean fuel so we need to go for clean cooking we need to use clean fuels while cooking we need to use energy efficient fuels while cooking those which do not harm the environment but which serve our purpose as well those are the clean fuels so there are different alternatives that are there the first one is instead of using firewood using cow dung cakes oil cakes or pellets made of different variety of organic matter these can be used instead of firewood anyway these are amply available in the rural setup so they are much cleaner in comparison to the firewood usage of solar cookers using solar energy we can use solar energy to the to pump or to channelize we can convert that energy for the cooking purpose so solar cookers also can be used of course they have certain disadvantages but they are very very clean the sun's energy is highly clean energy it does not cause pollution to the environment using kerosene as an alternative this is definitely cleaner than using coal or wood it's not fully eco friendly but it's better so converting into you know using kerosene as or kerosene uh, lamps or any other kind of kerosene um, stoves can be used instead of burning firewood and lastly this is one of the most uh, efficient it is one of the most feasible technologies that is available which is very very good in a rural setup because in a rural setup in a rural area we have a lot of cow dung that is being generated we have a lot of agricultural waste that is coming from there which can be used to generate biogas so biogas mainly comprises of methane carbon dioxide and certain small quantities of other gases as well what happens over here is in this tank we put cow dung organic matter any vegetable waste agricultural waste any waste can be put into this container into this tank add water over there to make a slurry and then that slurry is allowed to be in this tank in a closed condition or in an anaerobic condition where microorganisms work on it and then we get the biogas so biogas comes out from here and we can even take the waste that comes out from the outlet pipe which can be used as manure so that sludge can be used as manure this is a very good method to replace firewood in a domestic setup these are some of the alternatives that we can have to fuel wood the next one is controlling air pollution from the industries now in an industry a lot of smoke is being released regularly every work in the industry will release a lot of uh, you know exhaust which contains harmful gases which contains a lot of suspended particulate matter it's not only the toxic gases it's not only sulfur oxides nitrogen oxides carbon monoxide hydrocarbons it's not just that it also contains suspended particulate matter which is abbreviated as spm suspended particulate matter you can think of it like dust very fine particles which when go inside our nose or into our respiratory tract they go and cause a lot of problem in our lungs so industrial pollution and vehicular pollution especially is associated with suspended particulate matter as well now there have to be a lot of pollution control devices which should be used by industries they are being used many industries have taken up these technological measures which can you know remove the pollutants either they'll absorb the pollutants or they filter out the pollutants or they'll dilute the pollutants these are in place in many industries but we need to ensure that all industries should have this as a mandate so let's look at some of the filters some of the devices technological measures which can be used that are helping to reduce the air pollution the first one i have shown here is a cyclone filter cyclone filter like the name says it's a filter so cyclone filter or cyclone separator what it does is it creates a high speed flow over here you can see over here it's like spinning at a very high speed that spinning leads to the formation of centrifugal force and due to that force particles get collected at the bottom so the air comes in over here the smoke from the the exhaust from the industry comes in here and then due to this high speed spiral air flow that's created that causes all the particles to settle down whereas the clean air is air is taken out from the top so this is one example of a technological measure or a technological device that can be used to control pollution the next one we have here is an electrostatic precipitator electrostatic so think of it as you know something related to electricity what we do here is we pass the toxic gas or we pass the a uh, smoke or whatever exhaust is coming through a region that charges the particles so whatever particles are suspended in the gas they get charged when we pass them through this highly ionized zone now when they pass through this ionized zone the particles take up the charge and what we do is 
here we have the there are certain plates which are put up over here metal plates which are having the opposite charge now you all know opposite charges attract so these particles have a particular charge for example if they have a negative charge and these plates have a positive charge the moment this gas passes through these plates the particles stick to the plates because they are having opposite charge so this is very efficient it is very efficient even for separating the small sized particles so you get now the clean gas outside and these particles are removed at the bottom the third one that we have here is a bag filter bag filters are very simple devices they are very commonly used you would have seen these in cement plants in stone crushing units in mining industry industries it is very commonly used here we have a fabric bag there's a cloth bag that is there to remove the particles from the dust laden gas so what you can see over here are the the filters that are present in the bag these are you know they are permeable fabric they are fabric or cloth which is having small pores in it so when the gas passes through it the dust particles are retained on the bag and you have the clean air that is coming out these are the simplest ones called as a bag filter the next one we have here is a gravity settling chamber here it's not very efficient it has low efficiency in compared to the other ones but then it is very cheap and that is why many industries employ this as well so what happens over here is the gas which is containing the particles comes in through this inlet the there is you know there is the entire chamber slows down the gas flow so that the particles can settle down and then the clean gas comes out over here they are moved at a very slow velocity the air is moving at a very slow speed very less speed so that the particles are able to settle down by gravity but because it's only gravity that's in place over here this process is not very efficient the last one we have here is a wet scrubber wet scrubber or it's also called as a packed bed wet scrubber what we do here is we mix a scrubbing liquid usually it's water so we mix a scrubbing liquid you can see over here the water is coming in over here we have the gas coming in over here so the gas and the liquid are getting mixed with each other so that the pollutants are absorbed over here now there is what is present in the middle there is a packed bed packed bed meaning there are small beads of some non reactive material a material which is not going to react either with the gas or with the water so there are beads over here when we mix the water and the gas together the pollutants the suspended particulate matter will get absorbed onto this packed material onto this bed now once it is absorbed onto the bed you can take the clean gas outside so the you know the uh, clean gas comes out from the top and the contaminants are taken out from here this is specially done for acidic gases whenever the industries are generating acidic gases they do this and what they do here is instead of water they use lime water so when lime water mixes with the gas it neutralizes the components and the pollutants can be absorbed over here so these are some of the devices that can be used to control industrial air pollution apart from this apart from the technological devices we need to also look for energy efficient devices to save energy so one simple example is you know industries generate their own electricity and then that electricity when it is being generated there is heat coming out which they use for other processes in the industry for example for heating or for processing the steam so what they are getting as a by product they are using it for some other process in the energy in, in the industry which makes it energy efficient another example i can give you is where we have very advanced or you know very modern boilers and furnaces which can take the entire process to a much higher temperature but with very less fuel so a lot of work is happening in this not only that maintaining and repairing the instruments at all times ensures that it saves energy using efficient lighting for example led or using sensors to turn the lights on and off example in a bathroom you don't need the lights to be on in the bathroom throughout the time so you attach a sensor over there the moment someone walks in there is motion and then the light turns on these are all simple technologies that can be used simple measures that can be taken to ensure that there is energy efficiency in an industry that reduces the air pollution actually we also have clean technology that is to be utilized so we should not you know uh, uh, we should not depend too much on non renewable sources like coal or fossil fuels instead we should promote 
the renewable energy sources like wind energy or solar energy or water hydropower all of these are clean resources or we should go for recycling of things we can use green transportation inside the industry how do we use green transportation using an electric vehicle to move around inside the industry or using cycles if it's a very big industry you need to travel from one end to the other instead of using cars or buses inside use cycles so these are all examples of clean technology which can be adopted to reduce air pollution meteorological control meteorological control is basically you know meteorological conditions are the local weather patterns so how much the pollutant is going to concentrate or accumulate in a particular area is definitely based on the weather conditions on the meteorology so you need to ensure that you study the weather patterns of an area that also will help us to control the air pollution for example if a particular region is having a lot of you know calm air then the pollutants will not move around they will not disperse they will all settle in at a particular at, in that region as itself or what you can do is you can identify the source of the pollutant by using the weather data you can predict the air pollution event for example inversion can be predicted inversion is one type of event we will not get into the details of it over here you can even use computer models to predict the air quality if you set up this industry in this region then the air quality will move from this to this all of that can be done if you study the weather patterns of a particular area so whenever a new industry is set up you need to make sure that it is following all these uh, you know uh, all these points as well all of these measures are also taken into place for example the smoke that comes out of an industry should not move towards the city so we need to ensure the exhaust pipe is in such a manner that it is not putting the smoke towards the industry or you know it does not release too much smoke in case of cold conditions because it causes smog like i told you earlier so these are all uh, basic things that we should know the weather patterns of a particular region before we set up an industry because weather definitely affects how much the pollutant is going to concentrate in a particular region lastly we have something called as zoning strategy zoning strategy is like making zones so setting aside different areas for industry so that the industrial area is away from the residential area or in in between the residential area and industrial area having a green belt in fact one example is in bangalore there are three zones of industry one is the light zone one is the medium zone one is the heavy zone means only industries in the light industry category should be in the light zone heavy zone should have only the heavy industry category why have they divided this thinking of the city so heavy industries are all away from the city so that too much of pollution does not enter the city and does not enter the residential areas and in fact in bangalore very large industries are not even permitted because they will cause too much pollution the weather of bangalore is such that it is very cold so too much of air pollution if it comes in from the industry it will not get dispersed so you can see over here how the planning authorities have made sure that you seeing the weather conditions zones have been created and there are penalties also if the they do not follow the laws by the government if they do not follow the central pollution control board norms then they will definitely have to pay the pay up the penalties that is also there in all in all the cities globally this is there so the government will put up some fine or it may cancel your license it may even imprison you put you in jail if you do not follow the norms okay coming to the taj trapezium zone so this is one example of a zoning strategy now you all might have heard of this wherein it was realized that taj mahal that is the you know the monument taj mahal was getting affected from the smoke that was coming from the oil refinery that is mathura oil refinery was releasing a lot of smoke that contains sulfur and sulfur when it mixes with water comes down in the form of acid rain not only that it also starts corroding the marble that is it starts eating up the marble now that acid rain was causing yellowing of the marble it was causing cracking it was causing chipping so they this was brought to the attention of the authorities and then in 1996 they came up with the taj trapezium zone taj trapezium zone is a huge area an area of 10400 square kilometers which is in the form of a trapezoid you can see here that's why it's called as taj trapezium zone also abbreviated as ttz now this zone contains three heritage sites it's mostly in uttar pradesh but a bit of rajasthan is also there and it contains three sites and more than 40 protected monuments so it contains taj mahal it contains the agra fort and it contains fatehpur sikri now what is the point of this zone so in this zone you 
cannot have industries using coke or coal. Instead, they have to shift to natural gas. If they cannot shift to natural gas, then either that industry has to move out of the zone or it has to shut down. So it was made sure that the industries in this region do not produce anything that is going to affect the Taj Mahal. It was basically done to protect the Taj Mahal from, from pollution to improve the environment around that entire region. That is why they have formed in the form of a trapezoid and this has been hugely successful. In fact, if you all have visited Taj Mahal in the recent times, they even have a lot of electric vehicles that are plying in the vicinity to reduce the smoke as much as possible. This is about the Taj trapezium zone. Lastly, let us look at the use of vehicle. How, how do we reduce pollution from vehicles? Now, vehicles release a lot of sulfur oxides, nitrogen oxides, volatile organic compounds. You might have seen this as VOC. Volatile organic compounds are very common from vehicular smoke and that leads to smog and acid rain and all of the other problems that I told you earlier. High pollution. In fact, vehicular pollution is one of the biggest challenges globally. So what can we do to reduce the vehicular pollution? There are different strategies that we can take. The first one is to modify the engine design. You change the engine. Okay, I'm not saying don't use vehicle, but change the engine. Come up with a better idea that is a cleaner idea for ensuring that there is less air pollution. So modifying the engine design can be done by either using a catalytic converter or using four stroke engine as well. There are other technologies also in place, but let's look at these two basic ones. Catalytic converter is like a component that takes in the engine emissions, takes in the toxic gases. It has a catalyst inside either platinum or palladium and that helps to convert these toxic gases into harmless compounds. So hydrocarbons are, this is hydrocarbon, hydrocarbons are converted into carbon dioxide and water or carbon monoxide is converted into carbon dioxide or we have the nitrogenous compounds which are being converted into nitrogen gas and oxygen. So in this way, whatever was toxic to the environment is being converted into a harmless compound. We can also have a four stroke engine. Four stroke engine is an internal combustion engine which has four piston strokes that you can see over here. What is the difference over here between a four stroke and a two stroke? Two stroke is less efficient because in a four stroke, fuel is consumed ev once every four strokes. In a two stroke, that doesn't happen. Here you have, there is more fuel efficiency because for every four strokes only, the fuel is getting consumed. So you are consuming less fuel. You don't need to use an oil or lubricant in a four stroke engine. So these are all small changes that can be done to ensure that the air pollution reduces. We can also go for clean fuels. This is a huge thing. A lot of research is being done on this. You would have seen a lot of electric vehicles in and around your neighborhood. So clean fuels or alternate fuels is very important. Any alternate to fossil fuel. Anything that can be used natural for example, the natural gas that is the CNG, compressed natural gas. We know that CNG has been, you know, used in all the public vehicles of Delhi as well. So compressed natural gas is one option or going for biohydrogen or we go for electricity. So we, you know, we have hybrid electric vehicles. We have pure electric vehicles as well. And we have hybrid electric vehicles. Hybrid electric vehicles use electricity plus the regular fuel. So they improve the usage of the fuel over there. We also have biofuels, for example, gasohol. What is the meaning of a biofuel? Fuel that you are producing from the uh, natural components. Here in this case, it is produced from crops. So crops produce that ethanol. That ethanol is mixed along with regular fuel. This is very, very common in Brazil. So these are all examples of uh, options that we can have or clean fuels that we can use instead of the regular fossil fuel like petrol or diesel, which are very, very harmful to the environment. We can also go for improving the public transport. So public transport reduces 95% of the carbon monoxide that is per passenger. So it's very, very important that we use more of public transport. We have, in fact, trains are more efficient. So a large number of people can be transported in a train at a time. It saves fuel. It causes less traffic conge congestion. It causes, you know, less of greenhouse gases are being released. So public transport has to be promoted in every city. To promote public transport, you need to make sure that there is public transport everywhere. See what happens in many places. Public transport is only in a particular stretch. So people end up using their own private vehicle. So government needs to improve the public transport system so that people choose this instead of their own vehicles. 
ट्रैफिक मैनेजमेंट ट्रैफिक मैनेजमेंट इज यू नो मेकिंग श्योर देर इज लेस कंजेशन और वॉट हैपन्स इज वेन देर इज अ ट्रैफिक पाइल अप वेन देर इज अ सिग्नल और पाइल अप इट इंक्रीजेज द वेहीकल एमिशन सो making sure the traffic is moving smoothly for example employing bus lanes or cyclist lanes for making sure that those people who are on those especially a bus it's a high occupancy vehicle many people can be fit into the bus at a time so providing such lanes will help to make sure that people are able to reach faster and there is no traffic pile up there is time restriction in many cities this is there trucks or other commercial vehicles are not allowed into the city in the morning hours or they need to use bypass roads external ring ring roads they should use instead of the city road this is all to make sure that there is no traffic pile up the facilities are provided for pedestrians for cyclists so that they are away from the motorized traffic all of these will improve the signalization it will improve the intersection so that traffic pile up does not happen that is our only aim over here we also have economic policy measures that have to be taken by the government so the government is putting less tax and duty for fuel efficient vehicles those who buy fuel efficient vehicles have to pay less tax this is all a measure put in by the government to encourage people to buy such vehicles or you know more license fee and tax is applied on older vehicles because they do not conform to the current environmental laws there is less tax on fuels like Uh, the compressed natural gas so people will be you know it's like an incentive they'll want to use cng which is good for the environment mandatory use of low low polluting or non polluting vehicles especially in government fleet this has been taken up in delhi they have told that every bus needs to have compressed natural gas as the fuel so these are all the difference in taxation is very important for making sure that people are encouraged to use these cleaner fuels or cleaner technologies in fact since 2000 we are having euro norms which are being followed in india you can see over here euro norms are being followed in india under the name of bharat stage emission standards that is bs standards you would have seen this on the vehicles they have stickers for this so these standards currently all new vehicles have to be bs 6 standard compliant but what is being used is bs 3 and 4 4 is in use since 2017 so these are standards which are applied for the vehicles how clean they are how how fuel efficient they are all of that is being employed this is set up by the central pollution control board so these are the different measures that can be taken to reduce air pollution from domestic congestion to to reduce air pollution from industries using a lot of technological devices energy efficient devices using meteorological control zoning strategy we can ensure that there is less air pollution from industries and from vehicles by modifying the engine design by using cleaner fuels by promoting public transport ensuring that the traffic management is done well and bringing in economic measures in the policy so that people are also encouraged to go for fuel efficient vehicles I hope this video was useful for all of you hope to see you all in the next one as well thank you